Hello, and welcome to another edition of Statistics Quest. I want to finish up on a few things that I was talking about last time that had to do with both counting principles and probability. And I want to distinguish between them to make sure you don't mix up one with the other and go over a few examples, okay? First of all, these are entirely two different things, okay? Counting principles, well, it has to do with the number of ways, right? So when you think of counting, right, one, two, three, four, five, that, you know, that lends itself to a number of ways question. Probability, all probabilities are between zero and one, right? So if they're asking a question like, how many ways can you order food? That's not a probability question. Okay, similarly, if they're asking a probability question, like what's the chance uh, that you get ahead if you flip a coin, that's not a counting principle problem. Okay, so make sure that you distinguish between those. It's very important. It's easy to confuse them, especially because very often you're using one concept within another. In particular, very often you're using a count counting principle within probability. Okay. So let's say that uh, we have a question, something like, how many ways can you flip 10 coins? Now, <clears throat> this is a how many ways question, right? It's a counting principles problem. So right off the bat, any counting principle problem is almost always going to take one of three possibilities, and that is either a permutation, a combination, or what's called a fundamental counting principle problem. A lot of times we'll abbreviate that FCP. And in fact, within a combination and a permutation, is a fundamental counting principle problem. So if you get in the hang of a fundamental counting principle problem and how to do them, you're going to be way ahead of the game. Um, so, and in fact, all permutations can be done by the fundamental counting principle. Combinations could be done also by fun FCP, fundamental counting principle. It's a little more roundabout though, but the reverse isn't true. If you have a fundamental counting principle problem, it doesn't mean that you can do it by way of a permutation or combination, okay? So one of the ways I approach some of these problems is if, I, if I'm given a how many ways question, very often the first thing I'm thinking is, can I do that by a fundamental counting principle? If I can, I'm not gonna even worry about combinations or permutations. Well, this can be done by a fundamental counting principle problem. And again, I mentioned this last time, it's real important sometimes to, especially if you're just getting in the hang of doing these, is to write down what can happen, right? So 10, 10 coins, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And then maybe you have a head, a tail, a tail, etc. right? This is half the battle sometimes. So you're looking at this and say, well, this can happen one of two ways. This can happen one of two ways. This can happen one of two ways. The fundamental counting principle is very basic. It simply says in words, multiply the number of ways you can do each action. We can think of each of these flips as an action. So it's two times two times two, right? That's just two to the 10th power. And that's 1,024, okay? 1,024 ways. Now, before we talked about permutations, order matters. Combinations, order does not matter, okay? When we flip a coin 10 times, and this is where there's a little bit of a gray area. And I, I used to have some students debate me on, you know, I would take off for a problem because it was a permutation and they thought it was a combination and vice versa. And I... I use my best discretion. In some cases, I said, you know, you make a good point. This could be construed one way or another. So context is always very important, in particular here. 
And very often, what I would say is, you know, you got to read between the lines. Uh, does order matter inherent in the problem? Well, so you might do this. You might say, well, okay, let me make up a problem where I have head, 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 and then tail, 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 tail. Okay? That's five heads and five tails. And then you say, well, tail, 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 head, 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 head. That's five tails and then five heads. You still get the same five heads and five tails each time, but in, in a different location or a different order. So the question might arise, even though this is a fundamental counting principle problem, it's still important to distinguish, should we count this as the same? In other words, did we got five heads here, we got five heads here. Shouldn't that count as the same kind of way or the, 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 the same scenario? And again, it depends on the question. How many ways can you flip 10 coins? This is a key word. How many ways? And so, you know, you flip a coin and you say, oh, this is what I got. Head, 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 tell, 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 tell. And the next day, you flip a coin, and you say, this is what I got. Tell, 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 head, 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 right, in that order. And, you know, you might ask, well, inherent in this problem, were these two different scenarios? Most people would probably say yes, okay? Although they're good. this is a little bit debatable itself, because we could change this a tiny bit. And now, now let's just say we are, you know, we're, we're playing a game with a friend and, you know, maybe he's flipping coins and, and I win if it's a head and he wins if it's a tail. And, you know, he goes into another room for whatever reason. He's going to flip 10 coins. I'm going to trust him. Okay. And he goes in, he comes back and he says, well, I got a head in the first five cases and the tail in the last five cases. And so we broke even, right? Because I got five heads, he got five tails, you know, or vice versa. Um, the next day we do it again. He goes in a room, right, for whatever reason. He's, you know, he wants to see if I trust him or not, okay. Um, and he comes back and he says, well, here's what happened. Tell, 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 head, 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 head. You might ask here, is this a different scenario than the day before? In the context of this problem, a lot of people would say, no, it's not a different scenario because there were five heads both times, and in fact, five tails both times. And if we're flipping coins and we're playing for a dollar a flip, it doesn't matter where the five tails came up. I just know I had five wins and five losses. So we could argue that these are, in essence, the same situation, the same scenario. So, um, but generally, again, when you see ways and you just kind of, you know, inherent in this, and again, this is debatable, so... Uh, but we're going to say that order matters here. And since order does matter and fundamental in the sense that it's not a permutation problem, but it matters in the sense of how we're counting. We're counting because this can be one of two ways. This can be one of two ways. This can be one of two ways, one of two ways. And that's going back to what we got. That was uh, 2 to the 10th power, which is 1,024. Okay. So let's look at now a probability question. Let's just say we want to find the probability of getting five tails and five heads. Okay. This is a probability question, right? One quick check. If you have an answer that's more than one, okay, um, with a probability question, you're wrong because prob all probabilities are between zero and one. So, you know, sometimes students, they'll get a question like this and they'll answer whatever, 1,024. No, that's a number of ways answer or potential answer. All right. So what we might do then is say, okay, well, Let's write out one way we can get five tails and five heads, okay? We might get head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, 
tail. Okay, that's one way. Here's another way. Tail, tail, head, head, tail, 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 head, 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 right? Each of these have five tails. There's tail, 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 tail right? Five heads. Oops, I only have, okay, I'm going to change, tail, t yeah, tail, tail, all right. So then you might say, well, okay, I'm trying to determine, see, this is a probability question, right? But very often within a probability question is a number of ways concept that will be used in the numerator and or denominator, okay? So, all right, so we might say, well, okay, we, ha we have a tail in this, and we could focus on head or tail. It, it doesn't matter in this case, but let's focus on tail. So we had a tail in the second, fourth, sixth, eighth, and tenth position. Here we had a first, second, fifth, sixth, seventh position, right? What we're really doing is we are taking out of ten positions, five positions with which to put a tail. Okay, or again, I could have focused on head, same thing. We could say five positions with it with uh with which to take a head. What that really is within this problem is a combination problem. So, in other words, if I were to write out all of these, there would be the combination of ten things taken five at a time. Okay. Now, this is where probability comes in. It is true that any one, matter of fact, earlier we said there were 1,024 different ways we could flip 10 coins, right, to the 10th power. This is one way. This is another way. If we're asking for the probability of getting five tails and five heads, this is really an equally likely outcome problem, okay? It's a little tricky, a little bit different than your diff, typical, say, dice roll, die roll, Right? You ask, what's the probability of getting a one if you roll a die? That's an equally likely outcomes problem. Also, six ways to roll a die, one way to get a six, so it's one out of six. So when you're talking about equally likely outcomes, it's the number of ways the event can happen over the total number of ways, all events can happen, okay? All right, number of ways event, the event can happen or the total number of ways that can happen. So getting back to this question, probability of getting five tails and five heads, it would be the number of ways you can get five tails and five heads, because each of these are equally likely, over the total number of ways, all of these can happen. We already said this denominator is 1,024. What's the numerator? Well, in fact, I already said that also. There are 10 C5 of these. So, so here's what it comes down to. In fact, you, you have... Inside this probability question, it's a probability question, but the numerator is a combination and the denominator is a fundamental counting principle, okay? So this is a good example to kind of wrap your head around those different concepts. Again, let's reiterate. It's a probability question, right? Five tails and five heads. It's an equally likely probability question because what you're thinking is, Oh, okay, out of the 1,024 possibilities, that's the denominator, 2 to the 10th power, there are this many possibilities, 10 C5, of getting five tails and five heads. I didn't do the math here. You should be able to do that. That's real easy. Just calculate it out, and you get your answer. Okay. Um, I'm going to go over one, just one other kind of uh, little different of a problem. You know, fundamental counting principle problems and or probability questions can, can come about in a lot of ways. And again, sometimes students say, I haven't seen that type of problem. Well, I didn't really sympathize with them that much because I would say, think through the problem, okay? Write down some things 
okay? And you'd be surprised how far it gets you. So let's, I'm just going to make up a problem. How about, uh, let's say you're playing a game. There's you and two friends. You know, maybe it's a card game. And you're playing quite a few games, right? And you feel that you're all equally likely as far as uh, talent and knowledge goes. And so you think that each of you has a one out of three chance of winning that game. And you play and play and play. And, uh, uh, you know, maybe it's, a, like I said, a three-handed uh, pinnacle. I don't know. Can you play pinnacle with three, game, with three people? I'm not sure. But um, whatever the card game is. And let's just say it took you until the 11th game to win. And you are wondering, so you ask, find the probability of winning your first game on the 11th game. Okay? Seems a little confusing, but here's what you do. So, first thing I would do is write out, I put dashes to represent an event, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You win here, right? Let's start with that. Nothing hard about that. Well, in fact, there's nothing hard about this. All right? That's what has to happen. And in fact, once you do this, this is the catalyst sometimes. Oh, I know how to do this. Because for this to happen, remember, if you need many events to happen, it's equal to the probability that each event happens, right? So, for example, to flip a coin four times in a row to be ahead, what's the probability that any one flip is ahead? It's one of, out of two. So it's one half times one half times one half times one half, right? Four one halves. What do you do here? Real easy. Two thirds. Because you have a two out of three chance of losing, don't you? Two thirds times two thirds, etc., times one third. So that's two thirds to the tenth power times one third. Multiply that out. Everybody can do that, <clears throat> and you get the answer. Now, you always need to make sure you're answering the question that is asked. What if we change it a little bit and ask the question: What's the probability of not winning your first 10 games. It's a tiny bit different. Well, not winning your first 10 games, we just get rid of this. Because not winning your first 10 games, it doesn't matter whether you won or lost the 11th game. You're just asked, what's the probability of not winning your first 10 games? Two-thirds to the 10th power, okay? So again, um, some basic concepts, you know, I, I, you know when I was teaching, uh, probability statistics. This is one of one of the more enjoyable things I had to teach. I think it's. I think probability. Everybody should should learn to think in terms of probability. Um, you know, many things we do in life are probabilistic, uh, in, uh, probab probabilistically inclined. Let's say, and uh, so I think it's just it, it's it's a good exercise to get in the habit of thinking through these problems. And who knows, some of you that. That are maybe taking a stats course and you're and you're starting out and uh, uh, you know maybe you have a little you're a little bit intimidated with uh, probability and statistics you might find that you end up liking it at the end but uh, all right so hopefully that is helpful that kind of uh, finishes summarizing some of the things we talked about the last few sessions uh, again uh, if you have any questions at the uh, you know for, on this or any of the uh, episodes feel free to ask and uh, if you like it don't forget to hit the like and or subscribe button and see you next time on Statistics Quest. Thank you.